question is, who are you going to call? Well, you're going to call Ghostbusters if you suspect mm -hmm. that your home, your business, your place of business, or any area has a ghost. Why you would suspect that, I don't know, but we're going to find out. Andy Rice is the founder of the West Coast Ghost and Paranormal Society. Andy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, California. Actually, Phoenix. 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 Uh, we cover all of the West Coast. Okay, well, so you cover California, you cover all the Western states. New Mexico, Colorado, Utah. Now, how, when you say cover, now people call you when they think mm. they have that's a correct. situation? Yes, that's correct. Uh, most of the time they will email us. Yeah. Um, in January alone, I had over 1,800 emails. Wow. And I answer every single person back that makes a comment, question. Um, but the ones I look for are the ones that want us to come in and validate whether they're crazy or not. Yeah. Does, does, <laughs> does Dan Aykroyd show up too? Does he come with you? No, but that would be great. Well, wouldn't it be nice, be nice to have Dan there? Uh, ghosts, I, you know, ghosts are spirits. Are they this one and the same, and which one is more palatable for people? Well, it's really hard to tell. It's based on a person's belief system too, yeah. um, because we really don't understand it. That's what we're trying to go out and do. Um, our group actually approaches everything from a scientific point of view. Mm -hmm. We set up a controlled experiment. We go in, we actually try to disprove the haunting. Everything reasonable that can be disproved, once you get that out of the way... So it's a what, process of elimination? Correct. Now, okay. Why did you get into this? Actually, back in college, about 13 years ago, I had an experience. We were out with um, a group just playing around this old abandoned house we weren't supposed to be in. Nighttime or daytime? It was nighttime. Uh, well, it always is, isn't it? Yes, it always is. Okay. And it was Go in, ahead. It was in Kentucky mm -hmm. and actually got shoved from behind, uh, pushed down a flight of stairs, and luckily there was people in front of me. So I didn't go all the way down. So you felt something or someone or a pressure pushing you? Correct. Something pushed me from behind and from that point, I was a skeptic mm -hmm. up until that point. Then I couldn't explain what touched me. There was something there I couldn't see, couldn't feel. It's just such an odd experience. Did you have a wood? Was there cool air, hot air? Was there any other any other presence that you felt at that moment? I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. And no one was behind you? No one was Another behind Another member of the group was not behind you? No, everyone was in front of me. I was the last one in line. Okay. So at that point you said something happened and then then what happened? Then I started going out and doing investigations, um, taking camera around what I could afford in college and actually going out and taking pictures and then I got a recorder, started doing some audio and listening to that and in 13 years I have not found one picture that I can actually validate. Um, there's validate a, if it's real or not real? Or? Well, saying that it was something paranormal. Oh, okay. Uh, so in 13 years you have not found a ghost? That's not true. Uh, we have caught a lot of audio. We have seen full body apparitions, her footsteps walking around us that can't be explained. But you have, don't have a photo? I do not have a photograph. Everything in there is a common photographic error that I've found. When you find something audio, uh, from the audio standpoint, can you understand it? Sometimes we can. Sometimes it's a completely clear voice. We run it through a software, take a look at where it falls in on frequency, see if it should be male, female, we have a professional sound technician on our team that listens to this and it's very expensive software and equipment that way we can actually visually see the sound when we're listening to it also. Can you tell if it's human? I can't answer that well, question. There, I wish I could. Okay. Well, I, I've got to say something <laughs> there. I mean, uh, that depends on how you look at the word Human is a yeah, ghost right. or a spirit yeah, human, there you go. Uh, but I mean, are we saying human as opposed to animal or human yeah, yeah. as alive or? Yeah. Well, most of the actual voices that we catch, um, it's called EVP, mm -hmm. electronic voice phenomenon. It's a disembodied voice that does not belong, that you don't hear at the time of recording. When you play it back, then you hear it. And whoa, whoa, back up, back up, back up. You're not hearing it when you're recording it. Correct. Okay, meaning? Meaning when I'm if we were sitting here having a conversation and I had a recorder uh, recording the session there might be something there on might right be now. something on yeah there might be something something on there. could be recording we're not hearing right now why would that be that's what we hope to answer 
Um, How many people are utilizing this service? Now, you mentioned you got a lot of emails, but a lot more believers these days in spirits or ghosts than maybe in the past 50 years? I believe so. Yeah. Um, there were surveys done. I do not remember, and I can't quote the survey exactly, but um, there's a large percentage, almost 90% in America, that believe in God. And there's about 82% that believe in ghosts. So, so it ranks right up there. Yeah, it sure does. Now, you have sophisticated equipment that you use, Yes. obviously, when you're walking through a building or looking for something. Correct. We have audio recorders, EMF, which detects electromagnetic fields because even natural rocks give off that. But theory-based is that when a spirit starts to manifest, it pulls energy from around it, creating electromagnetism. So if you see a spike there that can't be explained by a normal electronic or something around, then it could be paranormal activity. Do you believe or have you found in your investigations that ghosts, there could be ghosts floating around in the studio right now? It's very possible. There's two types of haunting classifications that we use. One's called intelligent, that someone actually communicating, answer questions back directly that you're asking. Mm -hmm. Then there's others that seem to happen on certain days, certain times. We call that residual. It's like a recording left behind, mm -hmm. a presence. Um, and usually around limestone and granite deposits. So some of this could be not necessarily a ghost or a spirit floating around. It's odd how we always say floating around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. But uh, it could be an imprint of everything that's done on Earth. Everything has energy. Everything makes its imprint and mm. is still there. It reverberates. It's in the ethers. It's in the, the thought waves of a planet. So it could just be that. It, it could be. It could be an impression left behind by a person because we as a human species have very emotional yeah. moments. So really, if it, if it is a fact that there are spirits or ghosts, then we're in traffic all the time. Of course. Which plane, though? Who knows? <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> hopefully we'll find a ghost, and hopefully it is uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Back after this.